Hey everyone, Jake here. Before we start this episode with Tulsi, I just wanted to run a couple things by you. I'll do it as fast as possible. June 17th, June 18th, and June 19th, my mother is performing at the Cap City Comedy Club in Austin, Texas. She's doing stand-up. Tickets are available at rosambar.com. Come out and see us. I'll be there. I know most of you watch the show are huge fans of mine. I'll be in the crowd if you want to have a drink, but you have to buy tickets first. Secondly, YouTube, as you know, has demonetized us. We hate YouTube. They're horrible. Rumble has been wonderful. So I'd like to say that if you really want to support us, continue to watch the show on Rumble. We are keeping a YouTube page. We still do clips and shorts, but I just don't really want to push YouTube anymore. I hate them, and I don't. I don't know why we would continue to be on a platform that hates us more than we hate them. So the show is now still on YouTube, but it now drops Friday morning at 2 a.m. The audio is released wherever you get your audio podcast, and then we do a live at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. The YouTube episode releases an hour later at 8 p.m. Eastern, and that's the new schedule for now. I know it's been a little confusing to follow us, but. I want to do what's right for Rumble because they're doing what's right for us. So if you really want to support us Friday night, 7 Eastern, go and watch it live on Rumble. Anyway, thank you so much and enjoy the episode. Greetings, humans, earthlings, and uh, others, and any members of the animal kingdom who might be tuning in because they love the melodious tunes of my fabulous voice, and people are sending me videos of their animals watching my show and snoozing, relaxing, having peaceful dreams. I appreciate those. Welcome to the Roseanne Bar podcast. Oh, you see. We are so excited because we have as a guest today someone I have followed for a very long time because I sort of consider her to be a sister of Hawaii, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Hi, Tulsi. So nice to finally meet you in person. And you too. It's such a thrill. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. I want to talk to you first about Hawaii. Absolutely. Because you were born there. I was born in American Samoa. Uh, oh. but my parents moved us to Hawaii when I was around two or three years old. And so Hawaii has been home for you went me Oahu. for my whole life. Yeah. Grew up on Oahu, all different parts of the Island. And, um, you know, through the military and through politics have left for long periods of time. But, uh, even when I served in Congress, I was in Washington DC for eight years in Congress and I would come home, uh, at least twice a month. Oh, cool. And even, as frequent as the back and forth was, uh, it was never easy to leave. And I was always so happy to come home. And I know you know that feeling. That, yeah, that feeling. Something about Hawaii, yeah. right? Something about it. Yeah. And uh, I I don't know exactly what, but I think some of it might be political. And I'm, I'm only bringing this up because I identify with you in so many ways. Number one, uh, we have a lot in common. I'm going to bring that up in a minute. But the uh, ability to change your mind yeah. and the continual growth of ideas and perspectives it is something kind of uh, inborn into Hawaii and the culture and the people of the longing for life and yes. the love of creativity and ideas and, you know, all those beautiful things that we have there that are yeah. sort of missing when you come back to the mainland, you know, in some yeah, way. You know, I, I, I attribute it to that Aloha spirit. Right. I do too. And, um, you know, it, it's something that I talk about and have, have shared with people everywhere I go around the world, across the country, uh, just just sharing the the really powerful spiritual meaning behind what is aloha because people are like oh, okay does it mean hello or goodbye you know what does this word actually mean but that spiritual um, meaning behind the word the reason why we greet each other with aloha is because of the spiritual connection that we have um, as children of God as that eternal spirit within every one of us and how it allows us to just cut through all the crap. And the labels, are you a Democrat or Republican right. or black or white or Christian or Hindu or most like all of this stuff. All of it. It, it, it allows us to have um, that meaningful engagement That's and right. that respect. Connection. Exactly. That right. connection that transcends all of the labels so that, um, you know, whatever the topic of conversation may be, whatever the circumstance, 
we walk away um, having elevated uh, our own learning experience, our own ability to listen to each other, our own ability to communicate and have that heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. And want to hear. Exactly. And receive, right? Yes. And share. Yes. But I think that so much of that, being a farmer over there, which is what, what I love about the big island that I live on, a different island than you. Yeah. But uh, the, the people who are stewards of and protectorates of and connected to the land and exactly. nature and the beauty that we see every day, the breathtaking beauty that exactly. we see every day also feeds that spiritual longing that we have yes. that you don't get in concrete places, yeah. you know? It, it is. You're exactly right. That connection and that sense of, of responsibility. In Hawaii, it's called kuleana, as you know. And it's such a powerful word because it speaks to the fact that uh, you, what, what you said, we we are stewards of the land, not consumers and exploiters. Right. And that, that can be applied to every aspect of our lives. When we walk through our lives with that mentality of, of kulianas, what is my duty? What is my responsibility as a person who's occupying space in this world? And who's connected to a community yes. of those we love. Yeah, exactly. Right? That that was that was what got me involved with politics in the first place. I knew in Hawaii. it. I knew it. Yeah, because I, I wanted to get into this whole yeah. thing about like uh, Hawaii basically being an aina place, you know, yes. where it's like it's kind of one. It is in a way all for one and one for all because yeah. everyone takes care when somebody, you, you know, yeah. they don't turn their back and go. I'm sorry, you don't have the right insurance papers. That's yeah. not the reaction of the people. Yeah. And even if it's to bring an extra can of beans, exactly. you know, it's always to give, to comfort, mm -hmm. to soothe. It's just so loving. And I think that that was like a, a, a great part of why Hawaii is such a socialist country. I always call it that, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I was drawn to that when I went because I was so much into socialism mm -hmm. my whole life, my parents raised us and my grandparents so they were like the old kind of socialist where it was about labor mm -hmm. like people being paid fairly yeah you know yeah n not pronouns right yeah um, back, back back where where i think people recognize that um you know in our society we look out for each other um, we take care of each other and what government's role in society should be not to overreach or mandate or direct every aspect of our lives, but to make sure that, as you said, people are taken care of. And yeah. that was what people asked me all the time. Cause I was 21 years old. I made a decision to run for office, primarily motivated by my love for the Aina, for the land. Right. And my, you know, I grew up in the ocean and, you know, hiking in the mountains and this was my home. And I saw too many politicians, frankly, who didn't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but, but I had to decide what party I was going to run under because it wasn't, I, I wasn't raised in a political home in the sense of you're a this or you're a that. What and year was this? This was 2002. Hmm. Um, and I ended up choosing the Democratic Party largely because at that time it was still that traditional, right. uh, traditional values in the sense of a President Kennedy type of Democrat, a, right. a Reverend Martin Luther King type of Democrat, a party that, as you know, in Hawaii's history, it went from being a Republican-controlled territory to, to total Democrat takeover because it was the Democrats and the union leaders who went in and fought for the plantation workers and the immigrants mm -hmm. right. who were basically being treated like serfs. Like yes. it, they were being paid crap. They had horrible living conditions. They were hardly paid anything. And as soon as one group stood up and said like, hey, we're not going to stand for this. This was not what we con signed the contract to come and do. Then they would pit the Filipinos against the Portuguese and say, yes, fine, you did. guys don't want to work. We're going to go and exactly. pit this other group against you. And so it was It was the, the Democrats who came in and said, no, we must stand together for each other and bring about change. And they were successful in that. Now, the town I live in on the Big Island is the town where the labor rights started. Exactly. Monica. And there's a monument to it. Yes. So I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. And and so that's where you look back at, you know, that was a Democratic Party that welcomed people from all different backgrounds, right. a party that still celebrated and actually fought to defend free speech, 
uh, that civil liberties right? was critical. Uh, even America. if they didn't like what you were saying, yeah. they would they would fight for your right to say it. Right, and and that's just where um, you know. And this is this is why I wrote a book about why I left the Democratic Party is because people will draw assumptions like, oh, you've been a Democrat for twenty years, and now all of a sudden you changed. Mm-hmm. Well, well, look at where the Democratic Party. Yeah. I always has say gone. that too. I still believe everything I always believed. Yeah. I just look at the different ways of getting there. That's right. And I go, I didn't leave the party. It left me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's so many people who who feel exactly the way uh, that we do right now with the insanity of everything that's going on. Something as basic and fundamental as free speech. Yeah. We can't we can't take that for granted anymore because the people in charge of the Democratic Party today, number one, they don't reflect the rank and file Democrat mm-hmm. Democrats in the mm-hmm. country. And they are actively saying, yeah, no free speech. We don't think it applies anymore. Yeah. Well, this is a subject of your newest book, it right? It is. It is. It's the first book that I've ever written and it really um, it talks about my personal experiences at, and and it talks about and diagnoses the ways that the Democratic Party of today are are threatening these most fundamental values and principles that make us who we are as Americans and that make this country the great country that it is. The one we love and fought and died for exactly. and paid for as well, right? Exactly. They, they have tried to strip us of uh, everything. And they're, including and they're, our right to say no, we won't take a forced uh, medication of exactly. any sort. Oh my exactly. God, it's so scary. I, I mean, yes to that, and 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 the fact that even during that whole COVID period, uh, and I know you know this very well because you've been on the receiving end of this, is just saying things like, "Hey, we should we should uh, you know try to be healthy," or maybe there are alternative treatments yeah. <laughs> that you can pursue yeah, they maybe like we that. should listen to these other doctors yeah. instead right. of you ruining their lives and <laughs> censoring them maybe maybe yeah. they have something to say yeah. i never thought we would live in a country and i know as you do there are physicians who i've gotten to know especially in california and some other places who whose licenses are being threatened yeah. well, if yeah. they dared to express their professional medical opinion yeah. about how people could be treated or how they could uh, preemptively, you know, try to stay healthy. Yeah. When do you think that big change came, the big crackdown, the big lockdown where the Democrat Party went, I guess, Stalinist or whatever it is, or fascist, both maybe? Yeah. When did that happen? To me, in my experience, and I'd be curious to see what you experienced, but I was serving in Congress. I was elected to Congress in 2012. Uh, representing the Big Island, representing um, basically all of rural Hawaii except for the downtown urban corridor of Honolulu. What I saw was a huge shift in change was when Donald Trump was announced he was running for president. He hadn't even been elected yet. And the Democrat so leadership- that was 15? That was 15 going into 16 in that 2016 election. And you know it went from the initial period of just like, Oh, it's Donald Trump. He'll never get elected. He's got no shot. And both right. Republican and Democrat leaders in Washington were all saying the same thing. This mm-hmm. guy's a joke, and he's this, and he's that, and there's no way. Uh, and these are these are part of the Washington establishment. Uh, but once they realized that he was striking a chord in the country yeah. that the Washington elite were ignoring, that's when they started to get very scared. And they started to realize that... Um, Hey, maybe maybe there's a chance that this guy could win, and that's where, of course, Hillary Clinton started waging the whole, you know, he's a Russian puppet, et cetera, et cetera, campaign. Um, which she that, did to you too. Which she's done. We're talk she about, and yeah. the Democrat elite have done to me. We'll they do doing later. to Bobby Kennedy. They do to Tucker Carlson. They do to anybody mm-hmm. on either side of the aisle who 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 they view as a threat to their power. They did it to me. Yeah, because I basically called out. The whole Democrat apparatus. Didn't they cancel your show? They canceled my show and killed my character yeah. and then brought my show back without me and it, stole my life's work. Based Jeez. off her life. Well, Ma, I know that you're not married now and you're back on the prowl, but soon I think on you'll the end prowl. up. I think you're going to end up with somebody. You can't be alone. Oh, God, and then, I don't want to be with anybody. You say that every time. Unless it was just to use them like on the ID channel where... You marry him and then take the insurance policy out and then, you know, 
put them the uh, what you call it antifreeze in their orange juice. Well, hold on, don't get ahead of yourself because Policy Genius is a company we do ads for all the time. Which yeah, is a life I love insurance. them. If you get it there now and buy a life insurance policy now. In 10 years when this happens, it won't look as suspicious. So I would tell Yeah, you can't kill them right away like six months after you take out the policy. Like a lot of these no. people on the ID channel, yeah. they get caught because they get a big payout six months after the poor Not soul. Not smart. You so know, get they it. poison the poor soul. That ain't right. You got to wait at least five years. You got to be smart. If you have this. any morals at all. <laughs> <laughs> so tell people where to go to set this up. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Wow, so you could have things wrong with you and it doesn't matter. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Check life insurance off your to do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Also, it's worth noting if it's not a murderous plan, if you have children or you want to be just smart and protect your kids, because you could also do that with life insurance. Very you important. could actually do the right thing. You could too. Right, and just protect your family. We here at the Roseanne Bar Podcast, we don't care what you do, as long as you go to Policy Genius. Stuff. No, but we want them to do the right thing. I want you to do That's the why they thing. should go to policygenius.com. That's right. Charlize, you've been looking good. It's been filling in your speed bumps and pock marks. It's like spackle or something. You look good, right? You are so rude. <laughs> you do look good, though. This shit's been working. So I don't know I what it is. I feel pretty. You, you do. You look good. I'm telling you. Well, the fun. serums contain ingredients like suspended oxygen, apple is. skin extract, and the essential minerals that can help diminish the looks of aging. It's and they're completely toxin free, which that's awesome because I've taken so many toxins. <laughs> Whether you're looking to pamper yourself or searching for the perfect gift for a loved one, Charlize Beauty products are the answer. And here's the very best part. For a limited time, you can get 20% off the entire Charlie's store when you use the code RB at charlies.beauty forward slash RB. So what are you waiting for? Treat yourself or a loved one to the gift of radiant calm skin with the Charlie's Beauty products. Head to charlies.beauty forward slash RB and use the code RB to save big today. Yeah, your skin's like one level. It's amazing. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. They're not effing around. No. You are not to say, there's a couple things you can't say. Muslim Brotherhood. Right. You can't say that. Right. And number two, you can't liken the uh, victim, the victim point of view that the Democrat Party's trying to force down everybody's throat which is exactly the plot of the movie Planet of the Apes. Mm. Exactly the same thing of standing up there. We cannot allow, it, just like they're doing, we can't allow these bo these human beings to have a boat or a voice. Exactly. That's what that movie did, was about. It's true. They're not allowed to speak. They That's can't true. read. They, they're just, you know, feudal slaves. Yeah. And that is what it is. Yeah. And, um, they did it in Egypt, and they did it in Iran, and now they're just doing it here. They did it in Ukraine, you know, too. You know what's interesting about that? You mentioned that you can't mention the Muslim Brotherhood. You can't mention radical Islamist mm -hmm. terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, or the, the Iran deal, mostly. Yeah, true. But that that's a byproduct of what what is this deeper underlying threat? And there's such a powerful connection to um, what you're talking about and what you experience to what we're seeing today is that not only because I went through the same thing during during President Obama's um, reign while I was in Congress. Uh, I got a lot of crap from the Democrat elite in Washington because I was pointing out the fact that in terrorist groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS and everything else, yes, we're battling them, but you have to not only wage a kinetic warfare, they are waging an ideological That's warfare right. mm -hmm. around the world. Their goal, uh, the, the goal of Islamism by definition is to uh, exert governance and control over the world according to their Islamist rule. Yeah. 
That is their goal. It's a caliphate. It is a caliphate. Yeah. And so under the Obama administration, they stopped, while I was in Congress, they stopped saying that these are radical Islamist terrorists and changed the terminology to say they are violent extremists. Right. And they refused to wage that ideological warfare. So fast forward to where we are now, both here in the United States and around the world, still these Democrats are afraid of calling out this ideology for what it is mm -hmm. and how it poses this, this the greatest short and long-term threat to freedom and civilization mm -hmm. uh, because they're afraid of being called Islamophobes. And so what happens on our college campuses when you have all of these college students yelling pro-Hamas uh, mantras and chants and saying, you know, pro genocide against the Jews and October 7th, 10,000 times over and over. Yeah. It's because of this failure by leaders in the West to wage this, this, uh, counter ideological warfare, which is essentially one well, don't where you we stand think that's for freedom. Because they're all, they all believe in that. They're all, they love the idea of a caliphate. Marxism is the very same thing. Yeah. You know, or, or when you really study like the whole economic thing and you go, okay, uh, just uh, rampaging capitalism is a pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. You got a whole bunch of people supporting a little tiny amount on the top. So here comes Marx, because I did all this study on it, and he inverts that pyramid. Right. So that it, of course, is going to crumble. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> it can't <Physics>. sustain. <laughs> yeah. And then when it crumbles, yeah. a caliphate comes in. Yeah. Here, and that's where, what they like because yeah. most of all, they despise women's rights. I don't know why people can't see that yeah. that's what this is at the base of it yeah. is to obliterate woman as a sex, as a protected class. And they're all like marching for it. It, I, it drives me crazy. It's insane. It's, it, it's literal insanity. And what they're doing is exactly that. They are trying to erase the word woman mm -hmm. from the English language, from government documents and regulations. And mother. Completely change the language. Mother. Chest feeder is my favorite. I, it's so bizarre, yeah. isn't it? Like, that, it's like so Title that, IX, he I, just signed that away. Yeah. All, 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 it's unbelievable. Through the stroke of a pen undid yeah. over 50 years of progress yeah. for women and girls. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, bypassing our own democratic process of Congress. Like if and you want to go do that, take it to Congress and see if you can pass that legislation. Right. And wasn't the Democrat Party for women's rights at one be. time? They still claim to be. They're That's running what's on so it. bizarre. That's their whole campaign, but they're, they're inverting it from abortion in Roe v. Wade. So it's like the Republicans are after you. They don't want women to have rights because right. you can't have an abortion easily. Oh, I really well, want to choose. discuss they that pick with and you. Choose. Oh, they invert everything. Yeah, exactly. I call, I, That's politics. A, a friend of mine called it the perverse reverse. Mm -hmm. That Their that's whole the whole ideological BS. They they want they want total control. Mm -hmm. That is their goal. They want total control and total power over every aspect uh, of their lives. It, it is so short sighted though, as they as they are undermining our democracy, undermining the rule of law, undermining our fundamental freedoms, because at some point the the, the there, there will be a shift in power. And then what are they going to do when they're on the receiving end? They've set this new norm that this is what it's going to be in America if we as voters allow them to continue. And if they're successful in doing that, when the powers shift in the other direction, they will be the ones who will likely face censorship. They will be the ones who likely face the kinds of political oppression that they're waging against their political opponents today. Well, there's so many different ways it could go. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of us really know. Because it could be like if Trump does get, win and is elected, that riots just hit every street corner in this country. That could be one thing. I mean, it could yeah, be like worse happen. than ever. Yeah, yeah that Worse will division and a real civil war. That could happen. It could happen the other way too. Mm -hmm. it, it could be that we suspend the elections. You Have you thought of that? Because that's the one that I think about a lot, that there is no yeah. election. I, I think that given everything we've seen so far, how brazen they are weaponizing the Department of Justice, uh, waging this lawfare. Yes, of course, most prominently against Donald Trump, but they're also doing it very quietly against everyday Americans. Oh, yeah. Grandmothers who are on the grass. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for exercising Trump. their right to freedom of speech, freedom mm -hmm. of expression. They hate our civil rights, don't yes. they? Yes. Well, just ours. 
just did, a horse. They don't mind Antifa civil did, rights. Right, did exactly. that start with the Patriot Act? Was that was this like incremental, like in Nazi Germany? It didn't just start overnight in Nazi Germany. The first thing was yeah. you had to register for a phone if you were Jewish. And every day in increments. And it seems to me like maybe incrementally, uh, Trump might have stepped in and messed with their timeline a little bit for those four years. Yeah. And so they had to hurry up to catch up where they would have been if uh, he hadn't been elected. Yeah, you know, there, there's, there's certainly the uniparty of Washington oh, yeah. of warmongers who um, they, they never hesitate to take away more of our liberty with the excuse that they need to do so in order to make us more secure. Mm -hmm. And the Patriot Act was a huge turning point. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know this. I get into this in detail in my book is they, they think that, well, all of this was necessary in order for us to secure our country and make sure there was not another 9-11 style mm -hmm. terrorist attack. But the and reality there were 50. is, the, the reality is though that Many but the reality those, is there were not as big as that day. Well, well, they were trying to pass these these authorities to uh, violate our civil liberties spy. and spy on yeah. everyday Americans long before 9-11 ever happened. Yeah. And rightly enough, there, there were people in Congress saying, no, that's unconstitutional. That's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. We're not going to go for it. So they waited and bided their time. The terrorist attack happened on 9-11, and they saw, here's our opportunity. Yeah. And they jammed all of this stuff in legislation called the Patriot Act yeah. and threatened- Which is not patriotic at all. They no, always it's not. They always have the of reverse. Of course. It's marketing. Of course, it mm. is. Yeah. <laughs> no. When it's but doing the exact opposite. But didn't that our constitution in a way? It, 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 it had that effect. And they told people like Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich and others who had the courage to stand up against it that you are traitors anyone right. who votes against the patriot act is a traitor to our country who That's is right. inviting another 9-11 style right. terrorist attack uh, into this country and so they they fear mongered and browbeated and bullied members of congress into submission Including cynthia mckinney that's right i think Al there Franken. was only one u.s senator that voted against the patriot act uh courageously because he saw was he saw Paul? what was wrong with it who was that? And wasn't that just He was all? from the Midwest. I can't oh, remember his name right now. It's but not important. It seems to me like all of that Patriot Act shit was just a way to open the treasury to these warmongers. And it, it is the war party. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, then they can just, yeehaw, three billion went missing. You remember just before 9-1-1? I mean, they just stole everything we had. And they're they still, sold it. They are still continuing yeah. Yeah. to this day. You think they they sold our secrets to China? They never got call on the carpet for any of it. They sold, uh, you know, they left our weapons in Afghanistan, and it's proven so many of those weapons were used on October seventh against Israel, which that was the subject and the context of my tweet that got me fired was that the Iran deal was an existential threat to the people of Israel. And I knew it, I'm a Jew, so I study that part of the world. Of course. And of course it came true. And it's like, they still go, oh, you said someone looked like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, it's, they're just their stupidity. It's irritating to me. Well, the, their tactics, what they did to you is, is like the, the oldest tried and true tactic that they use because they refuse to have a dialogue based on substance, mm -hmm. where you're making a substantive statement or an argument, they refuse to come back and say, no, Roseanne, you're wrong because of X, Y, or Z. Right. Instead, they resort to censoring, canceling, yeah. name calling, and smearing. And they do it, unfortunately, because it works. It yeah. sure does. It works, works. Well. It People works believe for it. years, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is, where, this is where I, I, I have some hope that the tides are shifting a bit because more and more Americans are turning off the traditional uh, news yeah. channels, mm -hmm. whether they be cable or, or newspapers propaganda or whatever. Propaganda channels. Right. And, and they are propaganda channels. And they're looking, uh, there, there are so many other alternative sources of information now, primarily through podcasts and mm -hmm. other things that people have access to at least a broader um, uh, spectrum of information to be able to make their own decisions for themselves, which is what this whole process is supposed to be isn't about. life about that it should be <laughs> right i was going to ask you because i i was reading that you uh your or, original religion is that you're you were born hindu practicing hindu yeah 
Mom, mom's practicing Hindu, dad's practicing Catholic. But for us uh, growing up, I, I never knew what sectarianism was. There was never any point where like, all right, kids, you got to choose. Are you, going, are you going to mass with dad or are you going to have a kirtan with mom? Um, they really, uh, we, went, we went to sleep at night with bedtime stories from both the Bhagavad Gita as well as the New Testament. And, and religion, real religion, I understood from a young age, is about love for God. No, oh, yeah. Period. I, it's not about what young building too. you go and worship in, yeah, or right. or really the label that you call yourself. It's about um, developing your own personal loving relationship with God, isn't it? Yeah. And that's that's that is what I try to center my life around. That is what motivates me to do what I'm doing. Is and if I, I can, heard you just talking about becoming a Christian and your love of you know Jesus Christ. And all it's, that to so me, it's, again, it, it's not. Was it's that not a big about, shift? No, or there's was there's it? no shift at all. Quite frankly, oh, it, wow. it really is about you know what what is Jesus Christ first and foremost commandment? It is to love God with right. all of your heart, your your mind, and your entire being, and is second to love your neighbor like yourself. Right. The essence of His first commandment is the essence of of uh, Lord Krishna's teaching in the Bhagavad Gita, which mm -hmm. Bhagavad Gita means Song of God. Mm -hmm. There is only one God. He has many names. He is all knowing, all powerful, all beautiful, all loving, and um, so so there there's no there's no shift or difference in yeah. really the heart of what I I know to be mm -hmm. the real meaning of of religion. That's fantastic. You it's know, beautiful. So you know, Judaism is so much like Hinduism, and a lot of Jewish people call themselves Jindus because they is that right? Yeah, because there's know that. so much in common there. As there is with All Christianity, them, really. with everybody, yeah, yeah. really. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about the Christian thing because you said you have hope. I do too. I have great hope because I know that in Iran, Christianity is spreading like wildfire. I didn't know if mm. I don't know if you knew that. No. Did you? Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel really hopeful about that because the first thing they do when they become Christian in Iran, um, I told people this before, but I was in Israel. I'm, you know, I told you I'm Jewish. Anyway, so we were uh, in Israel and our phones rang. This was 10 years ago. And it was people in Iran and we don't know how they got our phone numbers or anything. Wow. It was weird. And they said, we just want you to know that the people of Iran love you. We love the Jews. Wow. We love Israel. And we were dumbfounded, and then we began a very long conversation with those people, which I was having in my tweet. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I, just to tell you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's spreading like wildfire, and so that is like opening people up. Just to open up to new ideas is just the way the world's going, and with love— Instead of, you know, division and yes. needing to be right and hate and all that. Which is fear. It's, yeah. Which yeah, is fear, it, exactly. It's, it it is hopeful. It is. It and is. I wanted to also say, you know, I ran for president as a socialist in 2012. I did know that. And you know why? Because I was part of a women's group that helped kick Monsanto off the big island. Wow. In 2010. Okay. But uh, in my process of seeing that it was just, the very same thing of fleecing people to get their money. Yeah. Um, I was attracted to Trump because I see him as a populist. Yeah. You know, solving actual problems yeah. in our country for our people. Exactly. Right? Yes. Hey, summer's here. It's hot as hell. And Diet Smoke is bringing the summer vibes with brand new strain gummies. As a busy woman, I need products that actually work. That's why I love Diet Smoke's gummies. They help me manage stress and just relax. Diet Smoke is always trying to bring you guys the best tasting, most effective, and most innovative gummies you can find. And you don't want to miss these next releases. Now, gummies are great, but they can take a while to settle in if you get my drift. Determined to skip the weight? Diet Smoke got in the lab and combined the burst of summer citrus tangerine with a 
quick release THC. It seems, yeah. It seems pretty the quick. The sativa blend is a cannot miss. Looking for a little evening indica relaxation. That means in the couch. That's what indica stands for. Yeah. Their gummies will wind you down and tuck you in for the best sleep of your life. Kickstart your summer with the ultimate vibes. Go to www.dietsmoke.com forward slash RB today to discover the perfect strain for you and elevate your experience in new heights. Diet Smoke, your partner in finding your new favorite gummy. Cheers to Diet Smoke. Back to the show, www.dietsmoke.com forward slash RB. I can tell that it was kicking in halfway through that ad. So Ma, as you know, Americans throw everything at their liver from alcohol to cigarettes to toxins, basically whatever you do in an hour. <laughs> it's just a constant assault on your organs. I uh, have another sip. Right, we're talking. So uh, <laughs> Impact Brands, they've, they've chosen you for some reason to Are be- Are you saying I have a fatty liver again? I know you have a fatty liver, but I don't but know. I, th I thought my fatty liver was losing weight. I think it is because you've been taking these pills, but I don't know. I can't tell without looking at it. Through your shirt, it looks like it's grown in three sizes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Impact Brands is an incredible company. And <laughs> please tell the people where to go. Well, that is why it's important to start protecting your liver today. True. Right? Yes. You can do so with Liver Health Formula. It's an all-natural supplement which contains 11 clinically proven botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. This company already helped more than 2 million of our fellow Americans with their products. It's not surprising that the Liver Health Formula is so very popular. You can try Liver Health Formula and receive a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3 to keep your heart healthy. Good stuff. Try Liver Health Formula by going to getliverhelp.com forward slash RB and claim your free bonus gift. Remember, your liver is responsible for 500 key functions. It's time to give it a boost in performance. Yeah. So go to getliverhelp.com forward slash RB. It's funny because through my time in Washington, I would hear from a lot of, whether it's a Washington think tank or the people who make up that elite in Washington. And, and so often, and you still hear this to this day, they see populism, the word populist as a negative thing. Oh, they're yeah. They talk about the rise of populism <laughs> in so America weird. and the world and the great threat that <laughs> this poses. And I, I had a conversation with someone one day in my office and I said, what, what's wrong with populism? Tell me what's wrong with it, because to me, by definition, populism is the rise of people standing up for what's a, what's in the best interest of the people. Right. right. And they reveal their hand because they're afraid of that. Right. Because they, they and this is what's at the heart of everything that the Democrat elite are doing today is they I see a so. free people as the greatest threat to their power. Very yes, telling. That says more about them than it does about they the hate rise the of the idea people. of <laughs> states against the big bloated federal government. Yes. That's why they freaked out when they opened overturned Roe v. Wade because it went back to, hey, it's between a woman and her doctor yeah. and the community. Yeah. It's not between the government right. and a bunch of crazy people that scream in the streets. It's a woman and her doctor, which the Democrats, that's how they, that's how they sold it. Right. So right. they've betrayed themselves on that too. And yeah. it is like, uh, you know, going back to the power of the woman and the community and the small government yes. that they hate because that uh, suggests that people have the power to elect their representatives to create the legislation and be held that accountable. That stays yeah. in the community, doesn't yeah. go to uh, the Ukraine, the mm -hmm. money. It yes. doesn't get laundered. That's right. why they don't like it. That level of accountability, yeah. which is so um, difficult and, and lacking right now that that's exactly right they want more and more centralized power because that is uh 
that is who they are. That's what they thrive off of. And they can't have, they can't have that centralized power. If you have more power, that's decentralized first and foremost to the individual, right. which is what our founders envisioned right. for us is that individual liberty and therefore that individual responsibility that's and right. to decentralize government power. So as much as possible, mm -hmm. because you then have that direct relationship with your, with your, uh, you know, city council member or your state representative or even your elected uh, representative to Washington, uh, I you know I I've seen so much, and and like you said, in every part of our lives, we hope that we listen to what's going on around us, we learn from our experiences, and we grow. For some reason, in politics, that's like not allowed. But that's what I would hope for uh, for our elected leaders. Uh, and I've, I've seen so much and, and learned so much throughout my time serving at every level of government and seeing how even those with good intentions in the federal government, who, as we started this conversation, who want to do things to help those who are in need, the answer isn't more big government. It's not <laughs> the, the government is, as the greatest employer. The greatest employer or the greatest caretaker or the greatest educator. You, you know, you, you feel you, there are basic essential services. Yes. Like, Hey, how secure our country. Yeah. Secure right. our borders. Park streets, our secure schools, our streets. Our exactly. Water's but, drinkable. I like but when drinkable you, when water. you look at, um, you know, you look at things like education. Yeah. Uh, you're a new dad. Yeah. Jake. Oh, they're uh, homeschooled. I'm not doing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I was homeschooled too. Yeah. And, and there's, I homeschooled his brother yeah. for 28 years now. Yeah. He's I was not it's ongoing. <laughs> it's a lifelong <laughs> <Yeah>. education. <laughs> I was not homeschooled, but I wish I was, to be honest, because yeah. I, I had to relearn. I had to teach myself a lot after high school, after I, dro I dropped out of college. And after that, I started educating myself. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, I'm pretty smart. Who knew? I didn't know until I was 20 that right. I could learn. It was so friggin' boring and well, stupid. Well, they just want to create a docile worker, yeah. I guess. Yeah. They don't train you how That's to survive. It. That's it. Anyway, you Compliance. were saying, sorry. No, it's it's just, you know, the community, we are we are in Austin right now. And mm -hmm. you know, Austin is a very different place than Hilo, Hawaii. Yeah. Right. Or or any other, you know, uh, East Palestine, Ohio, or, or right. what, pick pick your, your, your small town or your big city anywhere in the country. To think that a federally mandated curriculum or standard for education uh, and method to deliver that education should be uniform across the country is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we're seeing more and more of it's our kids. It's completely racist, though, because the mm -hmm. ones left behind are largely uh, children of color, particularly African American children. Who are living in poverty. It's yeah. classist, I it's, think. And I think it's designed that way because they take the poverty money, mm -hmm. they pocket all the money, they take public funds and put them in private pockets. Yeah. That's their whole Marxist scam. Yeah. And they don't want, and part of that is, again, they don't care about actually educating our kids. They mm -hmm. won't give parents the right to decide whether or not they want to use our taxpayer dollars to go to a charter school or right. a private school right. no, or that to would be their worst nightmare for that matter. That's getting off the plantation, as Candace Owens says, you know, yeah. uh, because I they just met, feel entitled that they think they own the working class. Yeah. They think they do. Because they, they, they think, think they that vote we Democrat exist, no matter what. Exactly. And they think that we exist to work for and fund and support the bureaucracy. Exactly. Right. And the people Rather who than the vote, other way around. The 30% <laughs> of people who vote for Biden and them work in the bureaucracy That's and it. they're only voting to protect their friggin' cushy job and benefits. Job. Yep. They don't care yep. about America. They and only I, I care can, about themselves. As a veteran, I've deployed to three different war zones. I still serve in the Army Reserve today. And, and unfor there, there are a lot of good people who work in the, in the Veterans Affairs Department, but there are also a lot of people who uh, are, are bought into and are the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. And so when you call for help or you call to make an appointment, they treat you uh, like you're bothering them. Oh, they do. <laughs> and and like we the see DMV. this across so I many can't different help government myself. entities. Every time I face that, <laughs> I just, I can't because I'm, you know, just such a negative, hateful old woman. But I say, it's great. I don't when believe you're that old. for a second, Roseanne. <laughs> no, it's, it's true, Tulsi. 100% true. But I, I have, and plus, some people think I'm funny, but I'll go like, I'm sorry, I hate to make you work. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, a, it, it's an entitled, 
uh, in this entitled thing they got that they can they can just do anything. I mean, can you even believe Hillary Clinton is still walking around? Mm. I mean, do you know really? what you you talked a little bit about the election and could it be suspended? First of all, I think any anything is possible. We can't be complacent and think that there is a boundary they're not willing to cross because they've shown us that that doesn't exist. Well, they're making up these crimes that aren't even crimes right. against Trump. Exactly. And they got people cheering for it. It's about time he paid for lifting that Band-Aid off that pillow. Yeah. <laughs> he deserves life. Right. It's true. I mean, we laugh about it because it's so insane, but unfortunately it's happening. But one of the things that uh, someone brought up the other day to me was, oh, well, you know, you know, maybe they want to get rid of Joe Biden as their presidential candidate. And do you think that they will replace him with Hillary Clinton at That's the Democratic what I think. convention? Of course. That's what I think the whole thing's about. I thought it was Michelle People Obama. People have said that forever. I never thought it was going to be Michelle. No. I don't she think She don't have the do temperament. No. She can't be well, nice she for five want minutes. It. She doesn't want it. No. Well, she can't be nice for five solid minutes. Have you noticed that? She's bothered by people. I don't blame her. I have so many questions. Can we just stick on this a little bit? Yes. Because Sorry. I followed you for a long time. I it really will have. be Hillary. You're I, right. I was a Bernie bro. I know you endorsed Bernie. She, she was a Bernie bro, bro. So around 15, 16 is where we all kind of were like, something's up. Yeah. Then the Wasserman Schultz emails come out and, and all the corruption that Hillary's behind. And I just want to take people through the timeline that listen to our show that don't know this. So right when Trump did announce, you were a rising star in the, in the DNC at the time. I saw it. I feel like Hillary... Uh, and the powers that be and Debbie saw you as a potential threat to their Yeah, son. you were a threat. And so was Trump. And I think that's when it happened. Ber Bernie was the biggest threat at the time. Yes. So I think that they- Because he would have won. I think that, because we talked about that earlier in this podcast when that split happened. Yeah. I think it was even before Trump. I think it was when Bernie- Yeah. And that Bernie bro movement happened that Hillary was like, no, it's my time. Yeah. It's my turn. I let- Obama reigned. She was pissed about that. He was this young upstart. Mm -hmm. She saw you getting a little bit of that shine and Bernie. And I think that's when the Democrat Party went insane because a lot of people don't know at that time she had loaned money to the DNC. They were bankrupt. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And she said, and basically, and no short, I can't believe people don't know this. Basically, I'm going to fund you and you're going to do everything that I tell you. And mm -hmm. of course, when someone pays the bill. And they still are. Yeah. That's what they happened. Are. No, they still are. And I think it's Hillary and Obama. I think it's just this, well, I don't even know. I think it's probably Hillary, but that's my question. Because yeah. you did say this one time, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but when all this stuff was moving against you after you destroyed Kamala and, and ruined her political career. Oh, God, career, the most brilliant. The greatest thing. We'll, we'll talk cat about Hold fight. on. I was like, no, no. Cat fight. It was amazing. Go over and grab her hair. No, <laughs> she was done. She dropped out like two days later. Like she, and, and now then she's all, the vice president. And now president. she's the vice president. So that right there is kind of what I'm getting at. You had said, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you had said something along the lines of, I think now I know who's pulling the strings. You were talking yeah. about Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. I yeah. think you might have said I that. I was. That back back during that time, uh, and and you're not, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said, Jake. Uh, when I resigned as, I was a vice chair of the DNC. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was the chair of the DNC. I, I first of all, I got a call two weeks after I was uh, sworn in as a brand new member of Congress asking if I would be vice chair of the DNC. Yes. I had no, I, I literally, I was like, what is a vice chair of the DNC? <laughs> I don't like, what do no, you, you're what do you want for, what are you asking star. of me? Right. And so I said, yes, you know, I thought, Hey, this, if this is an opportunity where I can try to bring about some positive change, I will do it. Yeah. Um, but, but it was during that primary between Bernie and Hillary, obviously there were a few other candidates, but it was really a race between the two of them yeah. that I saw two, two things. One was that they were tipping the scales heavily in favor of Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. uh, and defying what the rules of the DNC are, which is as officers of the DNC, you don't get involved right. In, right. A, in a primary election. And, and number two, um, you'll remember that people talked about Hillary Clinton at the time as the most qualified person yeah. ever to run for president <laughs> in our country's history. Yeah, I remember that. Ever. I used to think that TM. too. TM. I never, th I never thought that. I never thought that I either. was shocked. I was shocked by it because, you know, yeah, she's got some fancy titles, but what bothered me the most and why I resigned and, and, um, endorsed Bernie Sanders was because there was no one in the media who was questioning, okay, well, fine, she's had these titles. What has she done? Right. What are the consequences of her decisions, both as Secretary of State, as U.S. Senate, oh, yeah. as Senator, and so forth, and especially because she's act, act, asking to be President and Commander-in-Chief. Yeah. 
And so for me as a soldier and as an American, that mattered a whole lot. Uh, Bernie, as we know, has long held more non-interventionist views. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton is the queen of warmongers yeah. who still reigns today. Yeah. And, and my endorsement of Bernie was largely around that issue and to be able Mine to have too. a platform to expose Hillary Clinton for who she really is to the American people so that at least we could make an informed choice. But what, what I didn't fully expect and what really did open my eyes was the very day after I made that announcement, it was a Sunday on Meet the Press. I didn't tell anybody my decision until I announced it on live television I went to work in Congress the next day and had a lot of my Democrat colleagues, former colleagues come up to me just saying, you just committed political suicide. I hope you know that. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, yeah. I will write oh. like your, um, you know, uh, eulogy yeah. <laughs> for your political death and and saying like there is a shit list that the Clintons have and yeah. you, congratulations, you are now on it and it's virtually impossible to get off it. And Hillary Clinton will be president. And you, as a member of Congress representing Hawaii, will get nothing yeah. for your district. It doesn't matter how badly your constituents need funding for new bridges or roads or infrastructure. You will get nothing yeah. because of this decision that you just made. She's that corrupt. Yeah. And yeah. then a few weeks later, again, this, this also surprised me a little bit, but I was doing an interview at the first presidential primary debate. I think it was the first between... Um, or at least it was the first that I attended between Hillary and Bernie, uh, an MSNBC reporter said on live television, it was in Miami, uh, aren't you afraid of what the Clintons will do to you? Mm. No. <laughs> and I laughed. I smiled. I was like, no, I'm not afraid. Was that a question? <laughs> like, look or at or what's at stake here. Yeah. But, but increasingly, um, yeah. And then, and then, of course, the targets were painted on my back, and they yeah. still are yeah, today, absolutely. to this day. Which is why I love you even more now, actually. <laughs> Because it is, it's a scary person to go up against. Yeah, but you just, you know what helps? Listen the listen or read the 91st Psalm. Okay. No arrow by night, no pestilence by day. Mm. You know, once, you, once you're once you tuned in and you you know and you're exactly. connected, there's nothing that can, there's nothing that can stop what's no. coming. No, no, exactly. And that's a big old freight train of change. And intelligence from the American people, that, united. That That is, and that's the call to action that's at the end of my book and that I'm delivering everywhere I go is, is exactly that. We can have agreements or disagreements on, you know, healthcare policy or mm -hmm. education policy or how we solve the great challenges of our time, but um, we have to come together around mm -hmm. our fundamental principles of freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and what's in our rights that are enshrined in the Constitution and Bill of Rights? Because if we don't, if we can't come together around those um, those principles in this election at this time, I am. This is the most important election of my life, it, yeah. and in, these freedoms the will be lost. Ever of every yeah. every empire, every country, and everything. West first East. The West, right? So, it, and the, it, it is it about is. the elite and those who are abusing their power versus the people. It That's is right. those who seek to take our freedom away and those who appreciate and celebrate freedom. And we have to come together to save our country. And and what does that mean in a practical way in this election? That means voting out President Biden and Kamala Harris and those who abuse their power and take our freedom away in this election in November. And, and then it's like reorganizing from top and to bottom. And then the real work, absolutely. Al along the lines of the people will vote for who they choose as their legislatures from the bottom up, That's not right. from the top down. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly and, right. And uh, what I see uh, oh, so hopeful about that, I, I really see it happening. I really see people becoming engaged in the local level. You know, that's yeah. what we have to do. Yeah. And that's what it was written for. The Constitution was written for that. That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, I think they hate us so bad, the uh, owners. Mm -hmm. They just despise us so bad. Yeah. They want to inflict harm, nonstop terror and nonstop harm on the American people. Uh, the ones who won't bow down to that. I guess it's Agenda 3030 or 2030, right? Isn't it just the UN coming in and taking over and making us a UN it's client It's a huge state? part of it. What's Agenda? I don't it's know what that is. It's a Agenda 2030, UN Agenda 2030 to take over the United States. And Obama already signed us over to it. 
Well, this this decision that's before President Biden right now has to do with the uh, World Health Organization's pandemic treaty, which is a part of that. Right. right. And again, this is one of those things they make sound nice. And of course, we in the as as a member of the global community, we should all come together to try to help save people's lives. But what they're not telling the American people is that we would cede much of our sovereignty and our authority to make our own decisions through a representative government to this global organization made up of people who are globalists yeah. and who don't believe in the rights of individuals to make our own decisions for ourselves. They, they want hate nation they want to states. save us from ourselves. They're anti-American. That's the problem. It's they anti- hate nation anti- states. Yeah. Yeah. They hate states. Yeah. They hate borders. They just want docile workers. Yes. That's all they want. Yes. And lab compliance. Rats. Yep. yep. So they can, you know, create a disease and then come up with the antidote. It's just Nazi torture. Isn't it's that, exactly that's a, Auschwitz. That that's that's like I'm I'm as you're saying that I'm thinking of of you know uh, so much of what's wrong with our own so-called healthcare system and how you know they create big pharma comes in and says okay here you take this drug to treat this thing and then we'll give you another drug to treat the, the, side the problems that that <laughs> that other thing causes and then meanwhile before and again I I know this from a lot of veterans still today a lot of my friends who are going to the VA and they're saying like I'm I'm struggling with this whatever the problem may be whether it be a physical challenge or a mental health challenge and they walk out with a literally a bag full of 20 different kinds of drugs, yeah. each one layering on top of the other, but none of them actually dealing with the deeply rooted challenge or problem that yeah. that veteran may be facing, which, which again, just shows like, what, what are the priorities here? Do you yeah. actually care about people mm-hmm. and care about, uh, you know, identifying what is the core of root cause they of don't the problem? Work a captive population and they can do experiments on us. Yes. I mean, it's as ugly as it can get. Yeah. It really, really is. And people don't want to see it because no. it's horrifying. But that's where it's at. Yeah. And that's where, as you said, I, I, that's where I, I see as bad as things are getting and have gotten. And as dark as the times may seem, I, I, I am hopeful because even those who don't pay attention to politics, traditionally people are like, I don't like politics. I don't want to get involved. Maybe they don't even vote. It's getting harder and harder to ignore when you have a little girl who's going to school and wants to compete on the swim team. And now you're confronted with this reality of, are there going to be boys in her locker room? Well, the boys are all going to win. Ready? So she can't have any dreams. That's my because, point. Because, you know, That's she's, my point. I sit um, Mm-hmm. I, I have two daughters and I, and I tell them, you know, they fall and I'm like, don't cry, get up. I'm raising them tough. And yeah. someone's like, why are you so hard on them? And I said, because she's going to have to compete against men, uh, biological men pretending to be girls, and she's going to have to be tough. And even then, the men that are around that identify as men, they're weak. They're yeah. not like the old days. So it's like, there's not even strong men to protect her. She's going to have to protect herself. She's going to be, they're both going to be going to martial arts. They're both going to be armed. People just need to get It's just armed. scary that I even yeah. have to think about this. We all need this. to walk around strapped. That's I why swear. we're in Texas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the Wellness Company, we've been selling these medical emergency kits, contagion kits, great shit. Let's talk more about it. The only one of its kind, this prescription contagion emergency kit from the Wellness Company provides you with a carefully selected assortment of effective medications for bird flu, COVID-19, and other respiratory illnesses. Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, z pack Tamiflu, and Bonesonide, along with a nebulizer, so you can rest easy knowing that you have emergency meds on hand, along with a guidebook for safe use. Backed by research from experts like Dr. Peter McCullough, the Wellness Company's Contagion Emergency Kit is a must-have for families. Good shit. Every American should have at least one of these kits in their home. Avoid the chaos, wait times, and price of the hospital and have exactly what you need for as low as the cost of a single doctor's visit. To be prepared for the unexpected, listeners can go to 
twc.health forward slash rb and grab your contagion emergency kit right now. That's twc.health forward slash rb and use the promo code rb for 10% off and free shipping. Kits are only available in the USA. Don't fuck around. Get one of these. They're important. Hey, do y'all owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. They are not your friends. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients. And they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay or you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com forward slash rb. That's tnusa.com forward slash rb you know the the thing about the second amendment though i think is is again has become one of those hyper politicized issues and one like every other mm-hmm. one of our rights in the constitution we got to go back and look at why why did they pass the second amendment after the first amendment right because the first the second amendment protects the first amendment exactly right that in an in an environment they they foresaw that at some point we would face an increasingly tyrannical government yeah. seeking to take away our liberties and our right to free speech here we are and that the second amendment serves as that check on the power of those who are abusing their power and turning our country more into something that resembles a banana republic and a dictatorship than yeah. one that represents a truly constitutional republic. Like one Absolutely. guy, the president signs away generations of women's sacrifice and work exactly by himself. And and what what recourse do we have? The only recourse that we have, yes, we can challenge this, and there are people challenging this in the courts, uh, which is one of those co-equal branches of government that serves as that check on power. But also it's through exercising our right to vote. And there are too many people, and I keep harping on this, because there are too many people in our country who don't vote. I know. Whether they think that their vote 40%. won't count. Or they think that, uh, you know, well, it's just the, the government is too powerful. Yeah. We don't matter anymore. I feel that way. Uh, our our gover- our founders envisioned a country where the, the power would, would uh, exist within the hands of the people. That we are the ones who get to decide who works in our government, who we vote for. And we how are, we decide to change. Correct. Because that's how we got rid of slavery, because we had the ability to change. Ingrained, ingrained in our constitution. That's right. When we realized something was wrong, we had the ability to change it. That's and we They are, don't like that are, either. That, and ex- they, they want to divide us through this fear mongering, mm-hmm. through this divisiveness, through this race baiting and racializing everything because we are weaker when we are divided right. yes. and when we are not engaged. And yeah. so we we have all of the power to bring about this change, but it's only if we choose to use it. Well, I just am asking for all the people who've never voted for once do something different yes. and go and vote. Of course, don't vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, no, you're don't telling him how to that. vote now. <laughs> no, you you've got to vote but for there's Trump a reason why. because we have to have populism. Vote for America. We've got to throw, throw the bums out, yeah. save our country, and reorganize it. We yeah. can't have criminals at the top that mm-hmm. get away with stealing all our money. That's what needs to change. Mm-hmm. My hope is that I want to ask you about the future because here's what I think is real, a real great thing for America is the people in every... Uh, community in every state get to see where the money is apportioned. Yeah. Hello, that was envisioned too, but they stopped that with the Federal Reserve. Okay. But to actually see where our tax money in our community 
is apportioned. That will be the true republic, you know. Yeah, that's that transparency and that accountability. We can't have accountability without transparency. How do we hold people responsible if we don't know what they're doing and we don't know how they're spending our money? And the fact that, again, we go back to the uniparty of warmongers, the fact that leading Democrats and Republicans stood against strongly Rand Paul's amendment that right. simply would have said, hey, we need an inspector general, which is essentially someone who is watching. Where is the money going? When, right. you, when you send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine, we just went through over two decades in Afghanistan where there was a specifically appointed inspector general to to account where those dollars went and who told the American people there were trillions of dollars that were wasted. Yeah. There were trillions of dollars that went to the military industrial complex. This is what happened. There's all this money that just disappeared in thin air and was yeah, never held lost, accountable. They lost for. money. Right. Yeah. And so they why said why they then lost it, but, why then yeah. Are, are these right. Democrats and Republicans in Congress so opposed to that very same appointment of an inspector general to tell us where the money's going in Ukraine? Because he'll tell us how where the money's going. Because they know the truth. Yeah, how about we get an inspector general over the investments of Congress yeah. and yeah. then we make inside trading on Congress Just illegal? Ban it. I introduced legislation, Roseanne, when I was in Congress that did that. That if you're a member of the House or the Senate, if you are married to a member of the House or Senate, and if you're a senior staffer for those members, you don't get to trade in stocks in any way, shape, or form as long as you hold that position. I because that. whether you're doing it or not, the perception perception is reality. And why should you have that special treatment to do things in insider trading that you are also very ready to throw private citizens in prison for for doing the very same thing. Well, yeah. how about they all invested in inoculations, mm -hmm. and then when people figured that out, they pass a law to hold all the pharma companies uh, for 78 years, you can't sue them. Exactly. They just are protecting their own criminal ass. Yeah. yeah. They're all prostitutes. They're paid prostitutes from lobbyists. They're mob bosses. That have nothing to do with the American people, and we're paying, and we're working our lives away to pay them to do that to us. We're paying for our own demise and the destruction of our own country. How can that be? It makes me so mad. As you know should. what? You and me should run for president, and vice president. We should. On a party that likes who's women. <laughs> who's vice president? And the Mom? earth. <laughs> Which one's president? Which one's vice we'll president? We'll be co-everything. <laughs> Socialist, But of just course. to give ideas because these things need to be heard. They, yeah. they need not to be called crazy yeah. and laughed at when you count when you ask for accountability for our public servants. Exactly. Well, if exactly. they deny it, then you know they're guilty. That's that's simple. They well, we already know they're all guilty for what they voted for. Then you have to force that for. through. I you, mean, they yeah. voted for more money to leave our country. Yeah. Well, I do know, I hate to bring this up, but we're probably going to have to wrap up soon, but we, you know, we have listeners to the show that are across the political spectrum they're not all just what you would think yeah and there was uh a, someone that a few people had asked me to ask you this question i already know your answer but i just want to get it on tape your uh early statements on israel and the funny of israel and your current statements some people feel you've changed i don't see no, that I don't change think personally you've changed. i just no. think you've got more but uh, what is your what would you say to them i think you just spelled it out better well well first of all the, the uh, just the overarching um, context that we should make our foreign policy decisions under in this country is what serves the best interests of the American people. Right. right. First and foremost. Right. That's, I've always said that that's yeah. never changed. Um, and so when we look at different situations like Ukraine and you look at different situations in different parts of the world, we should make that decision. Do we get involved or not? And if so, how based on, does this serve the best interests mm -hmm. of the safety, security, and freedom of the American people or not. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at what's happening in this proxy war against Russia, and I'm just using the two yeah. to compare, mm -hmm. yeah. that is a war that is undermining our security, Absolutely. pushing us closer to the brink of nuclear Armageddon. What to speak of the fact that it Do is... Do you think that's all to cover up their crimes? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. There's, you know... It, it's, it's serving the interests of the military industrial complex. It's furthering something that a lot of these neocons have wanted for a long time, right. which is to get rid of Putin. Mm -hmm. They have no, no articulated idea of, okay, well, if that's your plan, who's the next guy that's going to take over? And he, is he going to be better for our security interests? 
everybody who knows what's going on in Russia says, no, the next guy in line is going to be an even more hardline radical than, than Putin is. So again, short-sighted decisions that are counter to our national security interests. This is a war that our president should have immediately stepped in to try to negotiate an end to as quickly as possible. The, the biggest military experts of today have said the only way this war ends if there is, if there is a negotiated end. Right. So we're well, almost two Trump years into that's, in exactly. That's, we're almost two years into this war. How many Ukrainians have died? All because the president of the United States and his cronies have not only not led a negotiated end to this war, but have stood in the way of other leaders of other countries who've tried to broker a peace agreement mm -hmm. and told Ukraine, "Don't do it. Don't settle." So they've got the blood on their hands of every Ukrainian that's died that's uh, in this Come war. On. So you, you look at this, this uh, war between Israel and, and Hamas right now. My position is that Hamas, like every other radical Islamist terror, terrorist organization, poses a direct threat to freedom and civilization. Thank you. Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and so forth. Hezbollah. And so, yes, we have... A, a, an interest for the safety, security, and freedom of the American people to defeat these Islamist terrorist groups like Hamas, yeah. uh, both from a kinetic standpoint, a military standpoint, as well as from an ideological standpoint. Why do you think that messaging is getting lost in America? Because they are equating Ukraine and money laundering and the war party. By they, I mean the people that we that listen to us. And they're kind of seeing it as a similar situation. It's like, oh, here's another it's foreign war we're getting involved. They're nothing it's not. similar. It's, it's, and, and we and try and educate them on this, and they're like, well, of course, is, you're part of the Zionists, whatever. Well, the, and that, I think that, that speaks they're to it right insane. there, is, is there are unfortunately people who, um, and you, I'm sure you've, you face this, and you're more, more directly personally aware of this than most people, but um, there, there is such a hatred of Israel yeah. oh, by yeah. a group of people who are otherwise reasonable and open-minded and you can have an open dialogue and conversation with around a lot of other issues. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Israel, there's a, just a different standard yeah. that's applied, which is unfortunate. And well, scary. it's just, for me, it's like, I'm going to calmly say this. When I study it, it's like, you know, uh, Obama has a lot of influence over there in Tel Aviv, like he has in Columbia University and, um, you know, San Francisco, you know, liberal bastions. He's got a lot of, I call them Obama Jews over there, and they think the same way. They, they didn't like their Department of Justice because they, made, they make laws by judicial fiat, such as Roe v. Wade, too. They don't involve the people in any of their laws. They just get some elitist judges in a room and they decide what the law is. And they like that, the leftists. But the people who live under it don't. It's the same thing here, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's the elitists and the uh, owners. And they also gave so much money to uh, Hamas and I always say Hamas's headquarters is in Chicago. Mm. I mean, it's just well, it's, all it's tied certainly, up. It's certainly, again, this is, and this is, it's certainly in Qatar where they have billionaires. Well, yeah, you know, that's where all the money comes right, from. Right, exactly. Well, that's but, what I was going to bring up, the college campuses and the, the, right. the there's a, that's the number one. It, it's a, it's Blunder. a very big problem yeah. that, um, it you needs know, to people be who share our, our non-interventionist views. Yeah. We also have to be realists and Thank understand you. that that as much as we would like to live in a peaceful society where there is no war, which would be which would be perfect, that's not the real world. No, no. that the is enemies, not the reality that we live in. The enemies are at the gates. They, they are, and yeah. and mm. again, there there is an unwillingness to to understand that those. Of course, we we don't want to see the suffering of the Palestinian people and needless loss of life of people anywhere. No, Hamas doesn't care about Palestinian lives. Mm -mm. Their mm -mm. goal is to exterminate all Jewish people and wipe Israel off the face of the earth and implement this Islamic caliphate that will take away, you know, from from a broader sense, that will take away the freedom that we love. Well, they would take and Israel cherish. and then come here. 
That's what exactly. the Israel's and, the first and how do you how do you negotiate a ceasefire with a with an hmm. Islamist terrorist group that celebrates death yeah. and martyrdom? They have no interest in a ceasefire. They have no interest in saving the lives of innocent Palestinians. Yeah. And so, you know, oh, even like how do you how do you thing. even have a have a, a common sense conversation around um, you know, a, a Hamas led Palestinian state. It's you an don't. Islamist terrorist organization. Yeah. It's a Nazi state. That's what they want, yeah. with no Jews living in it. And they just don't like Jews. It's an age old hatred. It's they don't inexplicable. Like the West, it either. can't be erased. I mean, it needs to be like, you know, when we went in Germany and all those places and we had to invest in re educating people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know they don't have any interest in being re educated, but there has to be something besides just uh, endless war and death, there has to be some kind of incentive or something. Yeah. And I really feel there will be because I really think that we're at a desperate time and I, I'm one of these people like you, I'm assuming, but you know, I think, I think the prayers of a lot of people united together to ask God's intelligence to descend on our stupid ass <laughs> and just change things it's in sermon, us mother. so that we, it can, is. we can make a change in the world. That, that's the X factor. It is that's my, it is my daily prayer. I, I am one of the many who, who you know, my daily prayer uh, to God is to ask for that intelligence and that clarity and that... Um, and that courage and strength to to yeah. be a voice for what is right and to be a voice uh, for the truth and to be a voice for that peace and security and freedom that, that we all are seeking for our lives. Have you ever wondered what happened to Chuck Norris? Yes. I recently saw a video he made and I was shocked. He's in his 80s. He's still kicking butt and working out and staying active. Yeah, it's crazy. That guy, he's something else. What's even more shocking is he's stronger and can work out longer and even has plenty of energy left over for his grandkids. Because, you know, that, I mean, that is what matters above all else. Absolutely. He Speaking did of... this by making just one change. Hi, honey. Speaking of grandkids. He says he still feels like he's in his 50s. Chuck made a special video that explains everything. Now make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com forward slash bar or by clicking in the link below this video. It will really change the way you think about your health. Once again, that's chuckdefense.com forward slash bar. Click on the link in the description below to watch the video now. You won't believe how simple it is, but simple is always the truth. The truth is simple. Always. And it's also worth just watching just to see how good he looks. Just, just a out. reminder, the legendary Chuck Norris is a whopping 81 years old mm. and yet has more energy than me. What? Yeah. He discovered he could create dramatic changes to his health, simply focusing on three things that sabotage our body as we age. Watch his method by clicking the link in the description box below. ChuckDefense.com forward slash bar. I bet he says don't drink wine. I was just going to say, you're never going to watch a video because it's going to be don't drink, don't smoke and all this stuff. So, but for other people that want to be healthy, they can go watch it. I think it's just crazy to look at I have at no interest in prolonging my <laughs> life. Hey, I've partnered with Pain Safari to give one of you a fully customized Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss Z71. But first, let me tell you about the Shockwave Torch. I love this thing. America's not safe as it once was. And as you may have noticed, it's getting crazier by the day with open borders and ridiculous policies that are letting criminals walk away scot-free after committing horrendous crimes. Which is why always having a way to defend yourself is a really, really good idea. Now, guns are the obvious best solution for taking out bad guys, but not everyone has or wants to carry a gun. That's where this incredible flashlight comes into play. Everyone wants a flashlight. It's called the Shockwave by Payne Safari. Love this and thing. this innocent looking thing is anything but harmless. 
It is so powerful, it has a built-in safety and only charges when plugged into the wall. But press this button and it will discharge a brutal stun gun that will turn a 350 pound pedophile into a crying <laughs> baby and potentially stop his heart for a time. So friggin' cool, I love this thing. These are a must have for anyone from moms, dads, daughters, sons, you name it. It's the simplest thing you could ever own to help boost your chances so some dirty thug doesn't turn you into a victim. Go to painsafari.com forward slash RB. Enter to win this customized truck by clicking the link in the description and equip you and your loved ones with a shockwave torch and Paint Safari is hooking you up with a major discount up to 80% off and extra contest entries when you use my link below. Don't wait because this is a limited time offer. You only have three days to enter this contest. Don't mess around because you're going to get a you're going to get a flashlight that electrocutes people and a cool ass truck. Hell's yeah, America. It's like he, he, uh, increase love and dissipate hate. Exactly. Can you help us with that? We need some help down here. For and, real. and the thing is, he's a it, listener of this podcast. By he is. Way, so yeah, <laughs> big big we fan. Hope. You got the clip. Sometimes, God follows you. I Sometimes, if I'm not swearing. <laughs> no, he, he's a big fan of that too. <laughs> Well, we did, and I, I know you have to go. I just want to say, I, I noticed a theme in this episode, which is really cool. Uh, maybe I'm just seeing the pattern, but we're talking about the elites and the war party, yeah. and the biggest threat to them is, you know, individuals, empowered Americans. And then we talk about the caliphate and the Islamic uh, movement to destroy the West, and it's like, oh my God, the number one enemy of our enemy is being empowered Yes. individual right. and armed no wonder they're coming that, after yeah. that love each other yeah yeah and my first reflex this yeah. is what taurus says you can't always love everybody and sometimes you're going to hate them but yeah. you have to fix yourself so that your first reflex is love yeah mm -hmm. wow. not you not hate your first yeah. hate can't be your first reflex or you've lost oh well then i'm and hate, you can hate <laughs> them after if they deserve it but Compassion, empathy, and love has to be your first impulse as a human being, mm. or else you're lost. Wow. Yes. That's right? Profound. Love is the most powerful thing. And this is the problem that I see is love is too often equated with weakness. Yeah. That that love means you just roll over and you acquiesce and you let uh, somebody walk all over you, treat you badly, or whatever the case may That's be. That's how screwed we are. With love, that. love, and, and I can, from my personal perspective... Uh, especially as we, you know, we're uh, observing and honoring our fallen through this Memorial Day weekend. It is for love of country that my brothers and sisters paid the ultimate price Absolutely. in service to our country. Forget the politics and the politicians. The fact that we have Americans who raise their hand and volunteer, knowing that they very likely may be put in a position to give up everything, yeah. to give up their lives. That comes from a place of the deepest love possible. As a mother, as a father, mm -hmm. what your love would drive you to do to protect yeah. your child? What would you be willing to sacrifice? Everything yeah. driven by that love. Love is the most powerful thing. It is not weakness. And it's love that drives us to stand up for what is right, That's to right. have the courage to speak the truth, right. to have the courage to stand up against those neocons and warmongers. And to inspire us to take action to save our country at this very right. moment when our identity in this country, our foundation of this country is under attack. The great melting pot. Well said. I yeah. got goosebumps. I want to say this. Those people who died uh, in defense of our values, who gave their lives for them, they loved more than anything liberty yes. more than life. Yes. And man, that's astounding. Yeah. It, it is an astounding thought. And uh, so I'd like to close with this, which a friend of mine, Mary Daly, wrote. Uh, there is no liberty without truth. Mm. And so what a great interview. Go thank get her you. book. Tulsi, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so thank much you. for this coming. This has been such a 
wonderful um, just time. I'm grateful to be able to spend this time with both of you. Please come back. How nice. I'd love to. I mean, we love you. Let's I'd rock love to. this shit, girl. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see.